In this video, we'll be going over the publishing process with the Composer module. To the very top, you'll be given the name of the document you are currently publishing. Right underneath, you'll find a content audit. This allows you to check the contents of your email. To the left, you'll find a small preview of the document to again verify what you are sending out. On the right are your main contents. You'll first be shown the spam scale, which is a rough estimate of how likely your email will be marked as spam by major email service providers. Next you'll have links, which audit the hyperlinks and blocks on your document. So first, you check for the subscribe link, which is required for each of your emails. You'll also verify your calendar and RSVP box to ensure those are linked to an event. Below, you'll find a table with each of the text that goes external of site. Images are linked to also appear, however they'll appear blank in the link text column. If your document also utilizes dynamic content blocks or links an event, there is an option to also appear as such. After the content audit, you'll find the schedule step. From here, you can choose when your email will be sent out. By default, this will be send now. However, to have it scheduled, select the later option and click on the calendar to the right hand side. Select the particular date. To adjust the time, click on the clock icon, then again using the arrows, you'll be able to adjust the time. Once you are done, simply click out. Next, in the publication steps, your first options will be the publish to web and email. Email will be on by default and the web version option will make it available on your web archive. The social media networks below require intervention in the administration module to be set up. That will put your social media networks to share your published edition on the chosen platforms. For email format, you also want to keep this as HTML and text to ensure emails render with colors and styles. Email preheader is an optional field that allows you to customize the exact text that your email will appear with inside the preview of the recipient's inbox. Next you have throttling, which limits the amount of emails that go out per hour. By default, this is turned off, but if you're sending out large amounts of emails, you may want to throttle your emails to reduce the likelihood of being marked as spam. After throttling, you'll have the option to set the send amount. This works in conjunction with the subject line. The most familiar option will be all at once, where all your recipients receive the same subject line together. If you are A-B testing, however, you will select three subject lines where each will be sent to 10% of your overall recipients. Once the specified amount of time has passed, the remaining 70% will receive the subject line with the highest open rate. In this instance, we'll select all at once and enter our subject line. The next section, Sender, will allow you to customize your sender's name and email address. This will be the name and email address that the recipient will see the email has come from. By default, the reply to email address will be the same as the email address sender. However, you can customize this to a different email address. The very last step of the publishing process is selecting your recipients. In the green send to box, you have the option to choose from a particular mail group, an individual mail address, or event participants. For event participants, you'll firstly check the events that you wish to select and then choose the statuses you wish to apply. Note that the all statuses option won't go into each of these statuses in the events registration list. On the other side, you'll have the read but don't send to box. This option makes sure that your chosen recipients, which are again based on your mail groups, individual email address or event statuses, do not receive the email even if they are on the send to list. Once you've added groups to both sides, you'll see the total count of recipients. Once you complete the step, simply go to the very bottom and click the publish button. This will prompt a pop-up to summarize all the details you've chosen, such as where to send, subject line, and the sender's details. On the last pop-up, you'll also find the DKIM field. This field will tell you if the deliverability function is set up. If it reads no, you may want to contact our support team to find out how to have this included. This should also find your final recipient count. This number may differ from your send to numbers due to overlapping contacts in your group, 
unsubscribed contacts, hard bounce contacts, as well as contacts in your suppression list. After you've checked all the fields in this section, simply click on the publish key again, schedule email, or have it sent out immediately. This concludes our video on the publishing process.